Assalamu alaikum, dear sisters in Islam. Today we shall continue our mighty aunt names of Allah, Asma Allah al Husna. Today's lesson is Surat al An'am, verse 18. Surat al An'am in English means the cattle. Please have your notebooks and your pens ready for the vocab words of this week. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Wa huwa al-qahiru fawqa ibadih Wa huwa al-hakim al-khabir this ayah is telling us that Allah is the vanquisher. He can vanquish anyone, anywhere, anytime through his mighty power. He is falq ibad. Falq means above in Arabic. He's above all and everyone. He is most high. Over abadih. Abadih means all of his servants. It's sometimes translated as slaves. Servants, slaves. I will explain this in a bit. Wahua al-Hakimul Khabir. Wahua, we've had this before. Wa means and. Hua means he. Wahua and he. Wahua al Hakim. Hakim means the judge, the one who sets the law in his book and judges with the book that he himself wrote and gave to us. Wahua al Hakim al Khabir. Al-Khabir means he's very well informed. He knows everything, every second, everywhere about everyone in the entire world, universe, whatever, wherever, who Al-Khabir, and you cannot hide anything. Let us begin our vocab words. The ayah starts with a construct that we've had before. Wa, hua. Wa means and. You will see this so many times in Quran and it will always mean and. Hua means he. It's the subject pronoun. Referring here to Allah. Wa, huwa, and he. Wa huwa al qahir. Al qahir. Al qahir is one of Allah's names, the vanquisher, the one who can vanquish everyone and anyone. Alif. Lam, Qa, Alif, He, Ra, Al Qahir. Please write the students and remember it's one of Allah's names. Falk, He is above. Falk, Fa, Wa, Qa. This is the same letter in Al-Qahir. And this is the same letter in Wa. You'll notice it looks like the Wa. Huwa Al-Qahir, Falk, Falk. Let's look at Wa, Huwa. Wa, you can see Wa, and you can see it Falk. 
It is the sound of oo and oo oo and wa. However, when it's connected, it makes a sound ow, tho. As I told you, we're going to go slowly with the grammar because the letters take different forms, slightly different. And I would really suggest that anyone who's doing these lessons, I would presume, assume, encourage truly that you learn the alphabet before you perhaps try to go along with me. You can listen to these lessons because the knowledge of Asma al Husna and just reading the Arabic in the translation is so beneficial and enjoyable for you. But if you intend to be a true student of knowledge, meaning you intend to one day read and write Arabic and to understand Arabic texts, you have to start with the alphabet. There's no real other way if you want to be a student of knowledge. If you're merely listening for beneficial knowledge and pleasure, then just continue on your path that way. There are many different types of students and many different types of capacity in those students. Allah knows all of our abilities all of our intentions. Folk Ibadi. Wahu al Kahir Folk Ibadi. Here we have Ibadi. Ain Be Alif De He. This letter looks like a circle. Here it means a possessive pronoun, his. Now, when you learned Wahua, Wahua al Kahir, Wahua, you had that construct before, you learned that it was hua, wahua. I mentioned to you this is the subject pronoun, hua. It means he. It's a masculine subject pronoun. And anytime you see hua, it will mean he. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute. The same pronoun for Allah is masculine. Don't we say that Allah has no gender? He's neither masculine nor feminine. And that is correct. And we will go on in another lesson about what we can gain in knowledge of Allah's using the masculine there are different theories by different scholars, and I have my own. So don't worry about that now. Just know that this hua is the subject pronoun, masculine subject pronoun. And here, when we see it, it is the possessive pronoun, his. His servants, plural. Abad is plural. The singular of Abad is Abd, one servant. Abd is the singular. Now here we must pause because some of you are probably already asking, what do you mean he's Qahir? Vanquishing Abadi, his servants. This word Abad or Abd has been translated into English 
as slave and or servant. We know that the servant serves the master and is sometimes paid or not. We know that slave doesn't get paid. However, we are both because being worshipers of Allah, believing in Allah, knowing we're all servants slash slaves, we may expect some form of payment and we get it. But at times we do feel like slaves because sometimes we don't get what we expect and what we want. However, we're slaves because you see, there's no escaping Allah. He owns us. As I told you last time, who al Malik? He's the owner of everything that can be owned and he does with it what he will. He does with us what he will. But now the ayah continues. Wahua, once again, Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim. Al-Hakim means the most wise judge. Alif, Lam, Ha, Ka, Ya, Mim. Al Hakim. Al Hakim is the one who sets the means of judgment, which is the Quran that Allah has given us. In the Quran are Allah's laws. The laws are all wisdom, which is why the word hikmah, we'll get to that later, hikmah in Quran means wisdom. Hikmah comes from the same root, hakama, hakama, which means to rule and to judge with wisdom. And that is from the Quran, from Al-Hakim, the wise judge who is Allah, who is the only real judge. We might know about judges. We've seen judges and some of us have actually seen them in courts ruling with the wisdom that they know and have studied and belief. Then we have other types of wisdom and other types of judgments that are contained through lawyers in affidavits, etc., stating what is believed to be true. And yet, let's finish the verse. Al Hakim. Al Khabir, Al Khabir, Al Khabir, Alif, Lam, Kha, Ba, Ya, Ra. Al Khabir means the well informed. Allahu al khabir He is the most well informed. Nothing gets by Allah. He knows every single thing that we do and say, every intention, every circumstance, and He knows it simultaneously. He knows about all people everywhere, what they're doing every millisecond. And he knows it because he fordained it. Our destiny, our qadar 
as we mentioned last time, has been written before we were born. So in this sense, when we say Allahu al-Qahir, the vanquisher, folk above, al-ibad, ibadi, Allahu al-Qahir, folk ibadihi, it might seem a little bit scary, as it should, because he is able to take away our house and our wealth and our sanity at any time. He's really the only preserver. He's really the only means to our success or our destruction. However, we know because he told us that he is Al-Hakim. He's a wise judge. Al-Khabir, a well-informed judge. So Allah always brings us into two states, which is how a Muslim ought to be at all times. Hopeful of Allah's mercy, Allah's knowledge, Allah's fairness. We should always be hopeful of that. And yet at the same time, we must fear Allah's wrath. And Allah's wrath will descend upon us when we ignore, defy, deliberately disobey, neglect what we know to be true. And here, the key is what we know to be true. If we are ignorant and we are unaware of Allah's names and attributes, we mostly get a pass, if you will, because we have not learned. Either we haven't taken the time or the opportunity has not directly presented itself to us. And these types of people could be very decent, honest, and upright people. And yet, if they don't know Allah's names and attributes, there will be many mistakes made. And these mistakes will cause problems in their lives. Because no matter how hard you try to walk the straight path, there will be reasons, occurrences, in your life where you will fall down. We say in English, forewarned is forearmed. And that is why all the prophets came to warn their people. The messengers came to advise and warn. And those who follow the sunnah are obliged to do the same thing. Inform, warn, advise, but always know that you have no power over them. You may only inform, advise, and warn. Allah says that we should spread the good news Bashir. Bashir means to spread the good news. I'm trying to do that here with you by teaching you the names of the Almighty Allah. Let's think of the names that we already know so far. We know Al-Malik, 
the owner of everything. And we know Al-Qadir, the one who is completely capable, Al-Qadir. Do you remember last time we mentioned Al-Qadir, the most capable, the most able, to decree, decree, and we connected it to destiny and fate, Al-Qadir. And we did mention that Qadara has the sense of proportion in space and time and in amount. I'm sure you remember this. We also had last time the word Al-Khaliq, the creator. If you begin now to put together Allah's names with the knowledge you've received so far, you begin to feel Allah's mighty powers that are continuous and never even stop for a moment. They don't falter. If Allah created everything that we will do and say before we were born, and if huwa al-Qadir, he's perfectly capable of doing this and of doing everything, and then you continue on, huwa al-Qahir, he can vanquish us, huwa al-Hakim, he's a most wise judge, wa huwa al-Khabir, he's well informed, this is only the beginning, students. Allah sent us 99 names. And we will finish all of these 99 names, inshallah. As I told you in the beginning, I'm going slowly with you because I really want you to enjoy your lessons. I want you to write the vocab words, study them during the day and at night. Listen to the lessons again and again and again. Keep a list of your vocab words and try to memorize. Yes, I said memorize. Each of these small verses. Verses in Arabic is ayat. These small ayat, each ayah, that means each verse, each ayah, I will choose for you, inshallah, will be short. And as I mentioned, it will contain a name of the Almighty Allah. I am simplifying this subject for you because Prophet Muhammad said, when you teach, speak slowly, repeat, be gentle. But mostly, you should know what you're talking about. I have really uh, no certificates to show you that I have known Asma Allah al Husna. And yet, I feel having lived in Egypt for the 20 years that I lived there, I felt. Allah's names in action. And I witnessed those who obey Allah and those who do not obey Allah. And as an American, I witnessed so many, quote, non-Muslims, unquote, obeying Allah with what knowledge that they have received. Many of these were, quote, good Christians and Jews, unquote, following along the path of Jesus and Moses. And yet, because they have not studied Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, I feel that it's time that we stop labeling who Allah favors 
and who Allah does not favor and who Allah has punished and for what reasons. It's enough to know that huwa al-hakim, al-khabir, he knows and he will judge. Some persons he leaves the final judgment until judgment day. And others in his mighty mercy, he allows them to suffer in this world so that they will feel his power. And very often it is through suffering that one is led to study. And then through study, one is led to understand. As a new Muslim convert, there is no doubt that you will go through many trials. But inshallah, by learning Quran, especially Allah's names, you will be able to pass through these trials with the beautiful certainty of success that Islam was the best thing you ever chose for yourself. See you again soon, inshallah, with more of Allah's names in Arabic from Quran, the book of truth. Assalamu alaikum.